Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Today, I'm going to be going over what I think is going to happen in the year 2023 in the future of the Pokemon franchise. So today, I'm going to talk about the DLC, I'm going to talk about new Johto games, and much, much more. So guys, stick around. If you guys enjoy this kind of video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Alright y'all, so first things first, we got to talk about the heavyweight on the chest, the elephant in the room, if I do say that myself, the Q fan in the room. We gotta talk about the Gen 9 DLC, guys. Scarlet and Violet, the top right corner of the map has a big ol' region. I'm not gonna waste my time explaining it because I'm sure you guys have seen the videos. There's tons of videos out on it right now. Paldea is based off Spain, and as you guys know in geography, above Spain is France. It fits perfectly that right there is Southern Kalos, and right below it is Paldea. I'll put some images on the screen. I'm gonna talk about what I want to see and what I, if I had to guess what I think is gonna happen. In terms of the DLC, what we do in Kalos, I'm on the fence about them bringing Megas back. It's gonna be a really sticky situation you guys know since gen 6 there's been a brand new idea released each generation gen 6 had megas gen 7 had alolan forms as well as z moves gen 8 had gigantamax and dynamax and gen 9 has crystallization whatever the crap that's called when it comes to bringing megas back though they'd have to give megas to old pokemon again and then they'd have to kind of forgo the terrestrialization process and i don't think they really want to do that do I think we might see some Megas in other people's parties, like battles inside of Kellos? That's definitely a possibility. I think we'll see Megas come back, but we won't be able to use them. I just, I don't think they're going to want to give up their terrestrialization because then they'd be going about eight years in the past, and I don't think that's something that they want to do. But when we are inside of Kalos, I think it's going to be a little bit different than the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra DLC. I don't think we're going to do Gem Challenge again, but I do think what we're going to do is get to explore more on the story of Zygarde. I think we're going to see exactly what Zygarde had to do with everything. I think we're going to see AZ again, his Flabebe, Floet, whatever he had. We're going to see all that story unfold a little bit more and get some more ideas. Now... If I had to make an honest guess to you guys, what I think would be cool is that in the DLC, there's a future DLC and a past DLC. The future shows the future of Kalos, what's happened after the storyline of X and Y. The past maybe shows the war between possibly Paldea and Kalos. I think that'd be cool. I'd like to see both sides of it. I'm a big Kalos fan. It was my first game I ever played. So I'm looking forward to this DLC if it's what we think it is. Moving straight along though, I'm going to talk about what I think is going to be the future of Pokemon. So after we move on from the Gen 9 DLC, it's guaranteed. We're going to get DLC. We got to move on to Gen 10. Or do we? I think we have one more game in the franchise. And what I think we're going to have is another port of an older game. And what I mean by that is we're going to have another Faithful Remake. I know, it's scary. But guys, hear me out. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were bad games. I think Ilka knows it, I think Game Freak knows it, I think everybody and their mother knows it. However, I think they've learned. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were based off the games Diamond and Pearl, as you guys could probably assume, which are very, very bad games. I know Sinnoh fans don't hate me, I very unpopular opinion, I'm not talking about Platinum right now, but Diamond and Pearl, their Pokédex is unacceptable. Only having access to two fire types, one being a freaking starter and one being a Gen 1 Pokémon, it's ridiculous. But the fact that they were remade to the crappy games and not Platinum, that was annoying. All they had to do was just use everything that they fixed in Platinum and applied it to the original concepts of the game. This isn't a video to talk about my grievances with those games. This is a video to talk about what I think is going to be the next Faithful Remake, Pokemon Let's Go Johto. Now hear me out. The Let's Go franchise might not be around anymore. What I do think could happen though is a Pokemon Crystallization Gold, or a Pokemon Extremely Fluorescent Silver. I don't know, you guys know what I'm trying to say here. I think there's going to be a brand new Johto game very, very soon, because you guys think about it, we've gone to Kanto three times, we've gone to Johto twice. What's next? Johto. I think these games will improve upon the weird level curves in the original games and everything else that needed to be solved. So that takes us out of 2023. What's next? 2024, I think we'll see a very, very weird time. We were gonna get one more game, and that game is Pokemon Legends Celebi. We did Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we went back to Sinnoh. We did Pokemon Legends Arceus, we went to Hisui, early Sinnoh. I think we're going to have a very early Johto game. I think it's going to be based on Celebi, because Celebi is the mythical for the region, and I think it's going to be a very good game. I think they're going to use everything that they've learned with Legends Arceus and apply it to the same idea of Johto, and make another full-fledged story. Legends Arceus performed freaking amazingly. Why not do it in Johto? But when we look at 2025, that's when we start getting into Gen 10. I think Gen 10 will be 2025, it's a good solid roundabout year, and we are going to get brand new games. I don't think the black and white remakes are going to happen until after the Gen 10 games are out, but I think, if I talk about Gen 10 real quick, I think we're going to see a kind of a mix of everything that we've seen in the past. We're going to see an open world uh, aspect, a straightforward aspect, 
We might see Megas, might see Terrestrialization, might see Z moves. I think we're going to have trainers from every single region that we've seen so far be in one specific large region. I think it's going to be one of the biggest games of all time and be an incredible game. If you, like, I want, I want you to imagine that. Imagine fighting a Mega with a Z move. That sounds kind of cool. I kind of like that. Once we move on from those games, though, I think that's when we're going to get into the black and white remakes, which is not going to be black and white and, you know, brilliant whatever, or black and white too. They're going to remake the Unova region and just kind of forget about the old one for a second and make those games where they encompass the entire Unovan region into one large game. Games cost a lot more than they used to, and by that time, they're probably going to be in the $70, $80, $90 range, so they're definitely going to want to capitalize on the minimal game cost. After that, though, I have no freaking idea, just like for the rest of this list. I have no idea what's going to happen because Pokemon Game Freak likes to surprise us. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for an amazing year i hope you guys have a great year you know what let's set a tradition what is, why is my desk wet okay let's set a new year's resolution mine is going to be i will try my best to upload every single saturday like i've been doing for the past couple months guys i want to stay on the schedule for you guys because i love creating content for you but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys in the next video have a great rest of your day i'll see you guys next time goodbye